Thursday. Wow, another week almost here. Tomorrow's Friday, and that's when you get to see Neil, if you haven't seen him at all. So say hi, Neil. I'm, hi, everybody. I'm going to let you say hi first. Isn't that nice of me? Have you ever thought of being an announcer? And welcome I don't to have, I don't have the voice for it. Uh, an announcer voice. When I do radio stuff, sometimes afterwards the radio person will say, you've done radio a lot, don't you? Because they always say, people that are in radio have a face for radio, not for television, because they aren't very good looking. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, my name's George Geary, and you're in the kitchen with me today, and for the rest of the wor world, I think. Uh, we're uh, broadcasting from here. If you haven't heard the spiel, I teach all over the country when we're allowed to. I write a lot of books. Everything from the books today, or recipes today, come from my condiment book, I call it. It's really called The 500 Best Sauces, Salad Dressings, Marinades, and More. A lot of stuff, uh, which I wanted to call it Get Dressed and Sauced, but my uh, publisher didn't think that was very nice. But I thought Get Dressed and Sauced, you would pick up that book, don't you think? And so um, we're doing condiments today. And the reason why is I had so many requests of how do you make certain things like mustard. And I do a lot for the mustard group up in uh, um, uh, Saskatchewan. I do a lot of recipes for them. So I make my own mustard sometimes. And I've got mayonnaises today. So we've got two mayonnaises, a mustard and a ketchup. All you need is hot dogs and a party. The, Funny part about the country ketchup that's in the recipe, and all the recipes are on the website, you can check them out. But what's hilarious about this is when I created this and was working on this recipe, probably I think it was about 2005, I had to get four pounds of tomatoes and, and to make the recipe that I was putting together, and I had to test about four times. So I bought all these tomatoes. The tomatoes cost me over a hundred dollars because tomatoes were having a, a problem. It was off season and all the tomatoes you could get were from Chile and they had some embargo problem. So I had wrote in the introduction of the recipe, I wrote something crazy like, this is a really easy way of making your own ketchup and it's very inexpensive. Yeah, right, hundreds of dollars, but now it's not that much. If you have a lot of, uh, uh, I'm looking outside because I've always wanted to grow tomatoes, but we normally leave Southern California in the summer and then the tomatoes become sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> We've done that a couple times, haven't we, Neil? Yes, we have. Yeah, we don't, we're only growing herbs now. That's about it. So I'm going to do the country ketchup first. I'm going to start it up. And you don't have to worry about cutting things and getting not the bruises but like the the stems out of tomatoes you can just keep all those in because we're taking tomatoes and coarsely chop that with onions and cayenne pepper and we're going to put this on the uh stove for 15 minutes until all the juices come out so i'm going to put this off back in the back so i can work with other things up front and once in a while I might go back there and stir. So then we have granulated sugar, white wine vinegar, sea salt, a little bit of cinnamon, and dill and clove. So you wouldn't think those would be in ketchup but it is. And this is a country ketchup. And the other thing we have is a food mill. I'm not using the food processor in this and um, I have an all clad food mill and it's like that. This is why I don't have to worry about all the stems. All the stems and things like that, if I put it in the food processor, it would blend them up and we'd be eating them. Here, it's just going to pretty much keep all the solids up above, and that's what I want is all the liquid. We'll do that later on in the show today. Next, we're going to do mayonnaise. First time I made mayonnaise for a class, this one lady, she was sitting in the front row, and she said, this tastes a lot different than the stuff I get in a jar. Well, I was hoping it would because we're doing it fresh and uh, a number of people have never made their own mayonnaise. I suggest if you've never made it, you do need a food processor. And I also suggest getting a Cuisinart because it's the only food processor company that has a dribble hole in here. And you'll see what I mean when I start dribbling stuff. 
Let me look back here and check this. I'm going to move this around a little bit just so they don't burn on the bottom. I don't have any oil or anything like that in here. I've just got the tomatoes, the onions, and that. And they're steaming right now. And then I have um, canola oil. I'm using canola oil in this so canola doesn't have a big flavor. Like olive oil has too much flavor or too much uh, uh, woodsy, grassy flavor. So we want this to stay kind of plain. So we have a metal blade. If you don't have a food processor, you can still make it. It takes a little longer. But I suggest if you are thinking of just a food processor, to buy a small one, but always get one, one size up than you think you need. I like to do pizza doughs, so I do it in here, and this is the size you need. This is a 14 cup. And I stick with Cuisinart brand, not because they've sent me some, which they did years ago. They sent me two of them when I was working on a food processor book. Uh, but I, I just replaced mine because I broke a lot of it. So, okay, we've got our egg yolks and our vinegar and all of our spices. Oh, plus the tomato ketchup that I'm making. I'm only doing a half a batch. I'm not doing a full batch. How do we do that? This is how easy this is. After that, can I ask a late question? Just hold on, just a second. After it, okay. Now, how long does this last? Does only last about a week. week. Only a week. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't have all the preservatives, and then we're using raw egg. That's the other thing is you can buy pasteurized eggs already. I'm using regular ones from the grocery store. In fact, look at these eggs. I feel like I'm shut doing, but I bought, I went to the farmer's market. I'm saving these because I'm thinking, what am I gonna make? But look how beautiful these eggs are. Aren't those beautiful? Really pretty. Okay, let's look. Let's look at all the colors. Aren't those beautiful? Looks like Easter. Yeah, I was thinking these would probably die really neat with the natural dyes. Next Easter, I'm going to do um, like using onion and beets and things like that and making natural color. So now this is where we use our dribble. Let me check this one more time. I can do five things at once. And if you aren't getting a lot of juice off of the tomatoes, you can take a, uh, oh, uh, a potato smasher, masher. So here, we're gonna pour this in here, and this will dribble it a little at a time. And this is our tradition, okay, see? So you can see that. So we do that until that's completely done. I'm gonna get my tomato smasher out and smash these down a little bit just to get the juice. Sometimes tomatoes don't have as much juice as you want. Okay, you, did you hear the sound change with this? Yes. That means it's done. They're still Go ahead and look at, but look out. inside. I'm gonna scrape it. Look inside. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. now, see how thick it is? Yeah, very white too. Then we're gonna take and. Okay, and then we're going to do the next one. But see this one, because I have a lot of um, mayonnaise in here. you see that it needs to be blended up a little bit more in the dead center. You might have some of the mustard seeds fell. So I'm going to just blend that up. Wait, there's mustard seeds in there? I mean mustard, dried mustard. You didn't know there's dried mustard in here, did you? No, I didn't. I should have made hamburgers tonight. I've got hot dogs. Now, and it will thicken up just a little bit more when it sits. But there is our traditional mayonnaise. And 
then we will make a chipotle mayonnaise and we can use the same exact food processor we don't have to there's that one we don't have to um, clean the food processor because we're doing this one first if we would have done the other one first we would have had to clean the food processor so this way we don't have to so this one doesn't have as much oil in it but it does have chipotle uh, chilies same thing we've got uh, our egg yolks vinegar a little bit of mustard powder white pepper on this one a little bit of uh, sugar and what's our other thing sugar and nutmeg let me check back here again yep we're getting the all the aroma of the tomatoes takes a little bit okay so we're going to do the same thing egg yolks all the flavors except the oil and the chipotle chilies the chipotle we'll put in later and then we will on and you hear the the sound of it right now i'm looking for a towel i don't have any okay so we've got our oil going in after let's take some out that looks good so we've got same thing through the drip two after it's finished with the oil we'll scrape the sides and then we'll add the chipotles now the chipotles come in a little can and you can cut these open and take the seeds out if you don't want it as uh, spicy I like a little kick to it so I use Roma tomatoes in the tomato sauce I heard it's ketchup Hear the sound of that change, can't you? Now, if it doesn't congeal like the lap, this one you can add a little bit more oil. This one I just do a little less oil because the chipotles kind of take the oil. Okay, our chipotle is done, and we're gonna put the peppers in there. And like I said, I kept the seeds. Turn that on. Well, I'll pulse it. And it will make it. Hmm, a nice color. I love that look of the uh, Chipotle. Nobody knew what Chipotles were until that Jack in the Box store, Mr. Jack. Remember that yeah. commercial? That was yeah. funny. That was he funny. couldn't say it. He couldn't see it. So his the head had the wiggle on it. Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. So now the other thing is aioli sauces, which is about the same thing. Now, this one is a little runnier, but it will thicken up a little bit when it sits. And uh, this is good for French fry dipping. Didn't you used to do, when you were a kid, what did you do with French fries? Oh, it was our friend that did chocolate sauce. Oh, hot fudge sauce at Bob's Big Boy. What was it Bob's Yeah, Boy? French fries and hot fudge sauce. So healthy. Okay, so there's those two. And now we are going to do our mustard. Mustard is the easiest thing on earth. You don't have to do anything but put a bunch of ingredients together. We have mustard powder, espresso powder. This is a coarse, dark brown mustard. Then we have um, cider vinegar, mustard seeds, and salt. I keep turning around to check this. And we're cooking away. All we do is we blend all these together. Is that what you want moved? Mm -hmm, so you can see the bowl. Okay. So 
Look at all this together. Let me scrape that. Espresso. Espresso really doesn't add any flavor. It more or less gives it the darkness. And uh, there's the seed. We'll blend this up. Now this, when I was testing these recipes for mustard, um, brown mustard, I, I don't remember if Neil remembers, I had them in, in um, little uh, containers with dates on them because I wanted to see how long they'd last and stuff. And this one is very runny. It thickens up and you don't even put it in the fridge. And I put it into a little French jar like this guy. And this will be your new favorite spicy dark mustard. Doesn't make a whole lot because you don't need a whole lot when you use this. I guess I could use the smaller jar. There it is. Put this on the shelf for about two weeks. Yep. And no, two days. And then you're ready to go. So two days and you can refrigerate it if you want, but there's no need to. If you looked at all the ingredients that went in here, it was all dry ingredients anyway that's in your pantry. You just put them all together. There was nothing like carrots or anything that is uh, perishable. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back with those tomatoes. We have our mustard and you can see it's even thickening right now. It was really runny. And then we have our mayonnaises and while I was cooking the other, Neil tasted both of them. What did you think? Very good, very good. Tasted totally different than than bottled mayonnaise. So you were and the chipotle one I really liked. You liked really the good chipotle. Yeah. yeah. All right, that so was, that was my favorite. So now Neil wants some like steak or something. So our tomatoes and onions cooked down, and I smashed them. So now I'm going to put them into the food mill. If you don't have a food mill, you can just use a strainer, but since I have a food mill, I'm showing you, and I think I've only done the food mill probably three times when I was making tomato stuff. And uh, what it does is it, well, <coughs> excuse me. I don't have any garlic or anything like that in here. It's not tomato sauce. It is just tomatoes. And I did use an immersion blender to blend up the chunks to get some more liquid out of it. But you'll start seeing the seeds will stay up just by twirling this. And it comes with different discs. And this is an all clad one that goes right on top of Right on top. See how you have all the pulp and all of the stem, stuff like that. I don't press that through. You just do it until you start seeing the bottom of the metal. And that's it. Now, I will do that to make sure I get all of the liquid. Now, all that throw out. And there is going to be your tomato sauce. Now, your here ketchup. Our ketchup. Why do I keep thinking tomato sauce? Because it looks like tomato sauce and I don't make ketchup that often. This is um, a half a batch, like I said. So while you're making it, you might as well make a double batch. So we've got our sugar and all of our spices and our vinegar. We put all this in here. And we're going to put this back on the burner for and you're gonna stir it, medium high heat. And this takes, um, uh, about 45 minutes. So it will take a little while. And then you will have ketchup. So we're going to let that go for 45 minutes and we'll be back when this is done. All right, our country ketchup is finished with that 45 minutes. now. What I do is I pour it into a pourable container. It's very hot, so you don't refrigerate it right away either. You scrape it down, and then I do put it into this jar, but 
I keep the jar open. It's like a really thick uh, tomato sauce. Can you imagine that was five pounds of tomatoes? That's and a huge onion and it tastes so good. So what I do is I let it sit like that with the jar open for at least two hours to where I don't feel any heat and then I'll jar it and put it in the fridge. So we made that, we made our mustard and look, the mustard's really thick now. Our chipotle mayonnaise and our regular mayonnaise and now all we need is hamburgers and hot dogs which if you saw the show, Fourth of July show, go back and watch that. You can watch the Fourth of July show, how to make hamburgers correctly. Thanks so much. We'll join you. Uh, well, no, you join me and Neil next tomorrow, which is Friday, our last day. And I'm trying to think of what day we're making our mayonnaise. So tomorrow we've got margaritas and a bunch of salsas. And we're even doing a, a little sweet salsa, but we've got chips and everything. And uh, we know you'll love it. See you tomorrow. Take care. Have a great day.